Okay, so we're going to run source. Um, that's going to open up a few default overlays that we can see there on the screen. There's about five of them. Uh, but let's get into this web so so that's the only way that we can really configure this um, in any way that looks reasonable so i'm just going to wait for swift to load we're going to jump in we're going to fan view one of the robot paces in this case it's going to be coco and we're going to follow her around whilst we sort out our um, overlays so i'm just going to move the um currently watching over the left hand corner we're going to move the chat over into the bottom left hand corner uh, we can resize those overlays by overlays by clicking on the edge of an overlay and dragging it around like a normal window. Um, that helps us to um, position it the way we want to. So we're going to drag and resize the toolbar overlay at the top there, and then we're going to click on the settings button. So once we've clicked on that, we've got access to a whole bunch of uh, system-wide settings that we can use to, you know, to change what we see and how we use it. Um, I'm going to add an extra two fields on the right hand side here. So on the left hand side, I'm going to click on the first field and use my left and right mouse or left and right um, arrows to um, to change or select the field I want. In this case, it's the event and the distance. And on the right hand side, I'm going to select the power. So I'm going to choose my 15 second watt per kilo, five minute watt per kilo, and my 20 minute watt per kilo. So I'm just going to wait for that to go through. I'm going to leave time there. Uh, we're going to go back in. We're going to change now the currently watching settings. Um, at the moment, I've got power, heart rate, and cadence. I don't have a cadence sensor, so I'm going to remove that um, that component, and I'm going to add in drafting because that's awesome. All right, there we go. Draft. You must know your draft. If you're not following that. What are you doing? All right, so we've got drafting in there. Um, now I'm going to uh, have a look at the chat overlay. Um, we can change how that works. And the chat overlay is awesome. It's All this is so much better than Zwift's user interface. It's not funny. Um, we're going to change it so the messages appear in reverse order, so top down rather than bottom up. Um, and of course, you can change the look and feel of all these overlays individually. I'm looking at the map now, so the map has uh, the grade there, but I'm going to add a second field, the place field, but I'm going to change that to uh, climbed. Um, we can change the transparency of the map, um, the quality of the information there, and the frames per second. So we'll do that. Uh, I'm now going to look at adding the nearby athletes. But first I'll move that map out of the way, get him out of the way. Move him up into the corner because we're going to remove the Zwift user interface in a few minutes. So that's the map that will be up there. Um, the nearby athlete settings. So I'm just going to adjust the font. Uh, unfortunately, when you adjust the font, it seems to crash at some time, so you've just got to reopen it. Go back into settings. Um, I'm just going to move that back down to one. There we go. Change the. I can turn on or off things like only marked athletes, athletes I follow um, that I favorite in the companion app. I can choose to see only those in my category. Um, I can obviously change the background color. Uh, but then now I'm going to go and choose the individual fields I want to see. So I've turned off country flag because who needs to know that. But I have turned on team. There we go. And um, the what balance? I guess is it what balance? Uh, I'm going to turn off gap. I'm going to enable event position so I can see how I'm placing. Uh, and then I am going to um, check some other fields. Now, I want to relocate some of these fields in a particular order. So clicking the left and right arrows there will help me to um, rearrange those columns in the way that I want. All right, so we're going to resize that sucker down. We're going to squeeze him in, stick him in under the maps and he's going to replace the Zwifters nearby. All right, there he goes. Boom. Okay, so he's in. Next, we're going to look at, uh, yeah, we're going to turn the Swift HUD off, and we're going to start to make this a little bit less cluttered. All right, so what I want to do with the nearby athletes, though, is I'm just going to change the transparency so that I can see the map or the screen behind it. Uh, and now we're going to look at the groups. So I'm going to drag the groups up the top there, but I'm going to change it so it's horizontal mode, not vertical. 
And now I'll just resize that window and bunch it up so that it's sitting at the top of my screen there. Doesn't obstruct anything and I can glance at it to see exactly where I am uh, in terms of the groups that are behind me and the groups that are ahead of me. So I'm just going to <clears throat> adjust the, the labels, whether they be um, parallel or at an angle. Um, I can increase the number of groups that I want to see that are ahead or behind. Keep in mind that if you've got a lot of groups, it's a big race, you want to keep that down to two or three at most. Otherwise, it starts to get a bit um, clustered. Okay, so we've um, got that going. I'm going to tra change that to a dark transparent again. But I can set that for all of the overlays so they're all consistent and matchy-matchy. All right, so that's kind of looking okay. I think the fonts are a bit small, but I'll come back and fix that. All right, so now uh, we are going to... What are we doing? Oh, we're going back into uh, the Zwifters nearby, and I'm going to turn off Team. Don't really need to know that, um, and I can squeeze that information up a little bit more and just uh, be more economical with the space that I've got available. Let's resize those groups a little bit so that they're a bit bigger, um, easier to see some of those numbers there, especially the power and um, the gap times. And I'm going to just change the angle of the text there so that it doesn't get obstructed by the groups or the uh, graphics. All right, so I do want to add the speed to the currently watching overlay. So I'm going to go back to that into settings. Um, I'm going to scroll down that little list there. I'm going to add a new field and hit the, um, the cog there. Choose speed from the drop down menu and then just resize that. So that it is got the speed there and just want to move that chat window down there we go so the chat window is good um, there's a bunch of settings in there that I haven't covered I could spend all day just doing one video on one overlay um, but what I want to do now is just make sure that all of the, the overlays have the same appearance so I've just chosen the dark transparent that seems to work the best and um, now with the map though, sometimes the map um, doesn't add. So this is, I'm just re-adding the map again, just to show you what it's like. So you go back into Windows, scroll down to the list of um, uh, new windows you can add and click on Create and there's the map there. So that's just the default, but you can go and just rechange the transparency just so you can see more of the, the actual game itself. I don't need to know all the shapes and squares and colors of the terrain we're traveling over. What I, what I want to do know though is the um, the actual route that's uh, coming up. All right, so I'm just going to um, change the quality and the frames per second of the map so it's smooth and crisp and clear. And that's looking pretty good. Now, sometimes the map will, won't will refresh when you go from one event to the next. So just hit the X on the map, go back in and hit that plus icon and it'll get re-added. So this is sort of what my source for Swift looks like. So I've got my currently watching the top left-hand corner, map in the top right, the um, Swift is nearby. So the green ones are riders that I follow. Um, blue, that's obviously me. Um, and I follow those green ones by favoriting them in the companion app. And there you have it. That's uh, Source in a Nutshell.